say that the bird was coming every now and then and see that in this land there were also people. Right. And the people were working. Like what we see there, I tell you, I see this beautiful yeah, thing, right. a handmaid. And the bird realized that the people that were working, mm -hmm. they were using the land, Yes. they were eating from the land, yes. and every seed from the land was carrying a story. Wow. So all these stories, the people were carrying their body yes. every day by being the land and by trying to be alive with the, the time that with the story. Wow, beautiful. <laughs> so you can think of uh, a lot of endings. I mean, there's no one ending for this story. And that's why I love this story. Uh, I always say that stories come to you, you know. And some stories have the power to be told, isn't it? And this is one of the, my favorite stories. So I also uh, sometimes say, um, this is the story that the bird told the mountain, and I build in another story. Mm -hmm. So there are stories that are building into this story. Uh, it goes, it also depends on the audience. <laughs> <laughs> so, so some people say that when people walked up that mountain, they destroyed all the trees and they made resorts. Mm. Yeah. Oh. So that is something which uh, two-legged beings do. Um, when they start climbing, uh, they, they start destroying, isn't it? Um, as long as the animals and birds were there, it was natural. But when human beings came, it becomes difficult. But there was one more boy who said, not all human beings are bad, mm. you know. There was one human being who walked up to the mountain and he found a beautiful people tree. He sat under the tree and meditated and became the Buddha. <laughs> yes, so uh, it's very uh, nice to see different perspectives of the same story. One person said the mountain felt so sad that the bird did not return, that he burst into a volcano. <laughs> yes, and then everything got destroyed, and new life began after that. Yes, so um, sometimes we know that we identify with that story, isn't it? Mm. We identify so much with that story. I loved listening to stories. I went to a school in Bombay, which is in Maharashtra, uh, and this Bombay is a very busy place. Mm -hmm. It's a city, mm -hmm. okay? And you know how cities are. They are very busy, right? Mm -hmm. So they, you won't find the calmness in a city. Uh, but despite that, my parents thought that I should not miss out on stories. So my father told me stories every night before going to bed in English. Because our language there, I went to an English medium school. Um, the teachers were very insistent that we speak good English. But our second language was Hindi, which is the national language. My third language was Marathi, which is the regional language of that state. We have 28 official languages in India, by the way. So, this was the regional language. And my mother tongue was Tamil. Oh my God. <laughs> which is another language. <laughs> so my mother wanted me to learn Tamil. Because she came from a very rich cultural background. Where they spoke very good Tamil. <laughs> now, the, each language has something unique, isn't it? Yeah. So, Tamil has R. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? So, R is not very easy. We have three letters which are difficult, which we don't find in other languages. One is R, <laughs> one is Nga. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know the palm fruit, the palm tree, the fruit is yeah. called Nga. <laughs> Word, 
word which is difficult or letter which is difficult is nya. Yeah. <laughs> so we have nya. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> we have to uh, be adept at this. So my mother told a lot of <laughs> proverbs, and you know what we call alliterations, like she sell seashells on the seashore. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. that. Betty bought a boat, 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 bought So uh, so my mother told me stories in Tamil and my father told me in English and it was a wonderful combination beautiful combination so my father used to enact the stories in the night because my mother used to say go to sleep <laughs> yeah tomorrow school go to sleep and it was dark and you know i grew up with a lot of cousins my cousin brothers and sisters we were about 8 10 of us and we used to go near my father and there was this a uh, light which was coming from the window uh, the moonlight mm-hmm. and we could see my father's uh, figure when he was telling a story he had glasses also so he would say you true brutus then fall caesar <laughs> <laughs> and he fall down on the bed and he say go to sleep <laughs> <laughs> so we would wonder what happened to caesar after that right <laughs> so, uh, so my father was Uh, made the point to tell me a lot of stories from history uh, and and the greek and the roman mythologies in the night and my mother told me a lot of stories about frogs you know this was very nice don't be like the donkey that went towards the wall <laughs> and then i lost my mother and she tell me the story for it and it would be in tamil okay so this is how i learned both the languages now the school i went to was an english medium school and uh, i my classroom was on the third floor because i remember my fourth standard fourth grade we were a co education school boys and girls uh, together at that time i think we didn't fuss so much about sitting near a boy like people do now uh, <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> this is a modern disease uh, i think at that time we had no issues So we had a big bell outside our class, and whenever the bell rang uh, after one period was over, it would go tang. <laughs> God, it used to be very hot in the years, yeah. And we had a long corridor, and the boys and girls had to sit together. And the long corridor, we were the first to school that had a water cooler, uh, cold water. Oh. the tap like that so you press and cold water ah we were thrilled <laughs> for school right so everyone used to go to school for the cold water <laughs> <laughs> and also because in between classes we will rush down and play one game and run back yeah so we we and i enjoyed school so in in the school but the teachers were very strict and you know they had a table a stage on the stage one table and then they'll bring the big ruler foot ruler yeah big one and they would be like this so that we we know that the teacher is a 70 mm picture <laughs> yeah and she would say yes and we have to wish them good morning we have to be in the class before they came all that Now my mother was very good with maths with counting because she used to draw what we call rangoli uh, patterns with uh, rice powder uh-huh. outside the houses uh-huh. and you know she used to count the dots mm. connect the dots wow with the calculations so she was very good with maths and i was terrible <laughs> because she will say what is the answer and i will say three and a half cows <laughs> and she will can there be three and a half cows 
So she told me, today I want you to pay attention in the maths class and come and tell me. Now, the maths class was one period before lunch and we were scared of our teachers. Now, one boy, one girl, one boy, one girl. The benches were very small. And the boy who sat next to me, I was short, so I was in the first bench and I was thin at that time. So, whenever this boy was very... <laughs> so when he came and sat, he sat on the bench, I would fall. Yeah. <laughs> because it was not enough for two people. So all the teachers said, you both, I want you to be quiet. Because we would be pushing each other. So I told Raju, his name was Raju, I said, Raju, you're not going to disturb me because I have to pay attention in the maths class. <laughs> I'm already very bad at maths. <laughs> okay, yeah, he said. And he had one more problem. Not problem, but he had two teeth in the front. <laughs> so we used to call him Bugs Bunny. <laughs> and some of us will say we can grate coconuts. <laughs> but he was very sportive. So he came, sat down. And the teacher entered and she started her uh, lesson. If you take an apple <laughs> and cut it, you'll get one by two, one by two. <laughs> now, for me, sitting there, I was wondering how the apple can be so big, <laughs> isn't it? I said, what a big apple. <laughs> and I went into apple land. <laughs> Now, that was the time when Raju was, uh, you know, pushing me and he pushed, he pushed me, I fell down. And I was so upset because my dream of apple went <laughs> and uh, also I didn't follow what the teacher was telling. And I was upset because he pushed me down and I saw his hand and I pinched. Wow. And he did, ah! Okay, now the teacher, stand up <laughs> to Raju and show me your hand. Oh. And she took the scale mm. and he, and she pulled his hand. But she only pinched me. You're talking? You're talking also? Show me your other hand. No, but she only, again you're talking. <laughs> and poor thing, he was, he got nice beatings. And she said, get out of the class. And he went outside the classroom. That was the first time I felt the whole bench. <laughs> and I sat, but I was very sad from inside. Because of me, that he got punished, right? And my teacher went on. If you further cut the apple, you get one by four, one by four. Nothing I understood. <laughs> okay, so the, t the class got over and at that time, we always shared the lunch. Four of us would share the lunch. So my mother had sent one sweet laddu, what we call laddu. Only one sweet. And uh, I know that Raju likes the sweet very much. So I went outside and I said, Raju, Come inside, let's, let's eat lunch time. I won't talk to you. You pinched me. I said, it's okay. My mother has sent laddu. <laughs> <laughs> laddu, <laughs> ah. <laughs> he ran inside. <laughs> okay. Can I have the whole laddu? I said, yes. Take the laddu. Now, he was eating the laddu and I wanted to go for the cooler. Right? So I went. And next was our class teacher who had to come. So I was drinking the water and I saw that person coming to ring the bell. Now I have to go back to the class. So it was at the end, huge, long corridor, six classes and ours was the last class. So I started running towards the classroom and Raju saw this man who's going to ring the bell so he came out of the classroom and he started running <laughs> towards the cooler. 
<laughs> now I am running and he is running <laughs> and I am running and he is running and we both <laughs> the big bang theory <laughs> and I saw stars and I fainted oh. now that man who was going to ring the bell he dropped everything he carried me downstairs and the teacher said uh, she needs stitches oh, wow. so I was my mother was called I went to the hospital I had stitches done and then the doctor was very sweet he was saying I will give you something you have to don't cry don't cry how you don't cry <laughs> because it's paining so much right so then afterwards he gave me a, a gift and he, my, he told me to give it to my mother. Now my mother took it home and he said no school for one week. Oh. And I was sad because I loved school. So one week I was at home, after one week my class teacher, she came to see me and behind was Raju and my mother and the teacher were talking and Raju came to where I was sitting and he came and said, how far you, yeah? how far you? I looked at him, all air coming. <laughs> and I asked him, Raju, what happened to your teeth? I don't know how I lost it. <laughs> and my mother came from inside and she, you know, opened the gift. I had two books to read and a little box <laughs> and she said open the box and when I opened the box guess what was there? Two teeth! Two teeth! <laughs> and Raju said my teeth! My teeth! My teeth! <laughs> and so what ended up when we banged into each other his two teeth went in my forehead <laughs> transfer to another place and I had to leave that school mm -hmm. so I was very sad because I loved that school I go, gave one tooth to Raju <laughs> and I kept one tooth for myself <laughs> <laughs> so after many years uh, I went back to Bombay uh, to my old school and I saw a uh, uh, an old friend of mine and she said, you know, Raju, I said, yes, how I can forget. <laughs> um, he is now an architect. Mm -hmm. He has two children, a boy and a girl, and the boy looks exactly like him. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my childhood story. the same Raju. Uh, in, in that time we didn't have cameras like this, uh, no digital, right? So every year in the school there will be a photographer and I'm sure you all know with a black box and you need a, a sunlight. So uh, we had to come from our class down to the steps and he will come only one day to the school. Ha <laughs> <laughs>